So what if a fire did break out in your area on a cold, dark night with the wind blowing and now your power is out, your flashlights, you finally find them or you didn't get ready with them. And we'll show you that, what it's trying to find, what it's, what it's like to try and find your flashlights and your lanterns when the power is out. So let's get ready now and set those out in the different rooms and check the batteries now before you lose power. Now, if you do lose power, now you may have lost your communications because you may have lost your Wi-Fi and your internet access because of your power being gone. Now you have no TV. So now you're gonna have to get your power. The only power you have now is through your phone to try and find communications that see if a fire did break out in your area. Okay, so one of the things like we talked about losing power, you may lose your internet, you may lose your Wi-Fi, so you may lose all your communication other than your phone. So do you have a handheld radio? In this particular radio, it, it actually has a hand crank right, for power. So all they have to do is crank it a few times, then we can start listening to the radio. So everybody should have an a, a little AMA, AM, FM radio for emergencies. I keep this in the truck, I keep one in the grab and go bag, right, and I keep one for my family kit. So. Yeah, always vitally important to have something as simple as this that you can carry, right? So you can find out more information, emergency information, emergency notifications, especially if we have that wind event and the fire breaks out. You're worried about yeah, where you can evacuate, where the evacuation centers may be. Okay, do I have pets? Do I have to evacuate my pets? All that kind of stuff. All right? Okay, so what's it like now trying to evacuate your house with no power, no lights on, and you know that a fire is coming possibly, right, in 20 or 30 minutes close to your house. This is how we think in CERT. We prepare for the worst. So we want you to think that way too. Okay, so now are we ready to hook up our generators, an alternative source of power? So do we have, uh, do we have a generator? Have we thought about that? And have we thought about hooking it up? Because now that red flag warning didn't go just three hours, right? Now it's at eight hours. Now it's probably going to go a full day. And so the Cal Edison then gives you a call the next morning and says you're going to be without power for the next three days. And you don't know that. You might be out of power for even longer. So are we ready to be out of power for eight hours? Keep that refrigerator closed. And then you're praying the power goes back on, right? But it doesn't. Now what? Okay, so... Did you get a generator? Did you think about that? I mean, how many red flag warnings have we had just in the last year alone? Quite a few. So why haven't we bought a generator and it's time to get one? Now I'm not here to promote any type of generator. I'm just like, I'd get one at least that has 4,000 watts and above. You can get the smaller Hondas here at 2,000. Yeah, you can get a Briggs and Strat and you can get whatever you want. They have, um, Gosh, they even have solar generators now. They have gas-powered generators, and they have propane-powered generators, and even generators that can run on propane and gas. I have the old school here with gas. So what are all the things I'm going to need to get this generator going in the middle of the night when the power went out? Well, I'm going to need that light again, right? Sure bet. Well, we just talked about that. We don't want to be fumbling around in the dark, so now I'm fumbling around outside in the dark. I'm going to need an extra lantern. So I can figure all this stuff out. Now, isn't it nice how I have all this laid out perfectly for you? It took me 30 minutes to get all this set up and get going. And where's your generator in the garage? Or is it outside on the side of the house? Okay, so all these things are really important. And you have to dig it out. And how long is that going to take? So now once we got all this here, I have, I have my box of cords. I have extra lights here that I use. Once I get my generator going... Okay, and I have my gas cans, so we need to get gas and have that gas ready. If you're storing your gas for more than a year, you're going to need this thing called Stable, right? This will tell you how much you have to measure to pour into each gas can to make sure that the gas doesn't go bad. So really, really important. And on that, we learned a long time ago from another CERT program here in Crescenta Valley that, hey, I can put plastic, I don't know if you can see this, but we have put cellophane on the, underneath the gas cap and then we screwed the gas cap back on. 
that doesn't allow any air in and it allows your gas to stay a lot longer. The gas I got in here is like five years old and it's still doing great because of this cellophane. So it's a great little tip there. The point is I'm gonna need all these things and I'm gonna need an extra oil in case my automatic oil shut off on my generator shuts off. I'm gonna need more oil. You need to have all this ready. Do you got it? Have you bought it? Have you, you got it in a place you can get to fast? And one of the most important things is this little thing called gum out you get at the local uh, auto parts store. This will help with your carburetor. Usually I got to spray it into my carb to get the generator going. All right. And then the last thing we need is cords. So let's talk about those cords. Now I'm not going to plug these cords in until I get the generators going. But I got three cords here. Okay, and I'm about 25 feet from my door here, out here on my front lawn. And now, once I get inside, I gotta probably run another 50 feet. I'm gonna have 75 to 100 foot cords. Well, those are kind of expensive, so you gotta be ready. You gotta be able to save up for this, right? And have at least three cords that you wanna plug in. Now, you don't plug these cords in until after you get your generators going, get them fired up. Always check your owner's manual on your generators. Read those manuals, follow those instructions, okay? We are not here, this is not a video to tell you how to run your generator. Read those instructions on generator, read all the safety precautions, right? Especially before you start plugging in any cords to your generator. All right, now, now I got all my stuff ready. I got my, my generators here, I got my gas here, I got my gas in. So we're gonna turn it on, make sure we're on here. It might choke a little bit. All right, let's give it a shot. Just like I expected, it's probably not gonna start. So I'm gonna run back over and get my gum out. Okay, and now you gotta become a mechanic. So you gotta know your generator. I'm gonna take off my air filter on my generator. These are sometimes just the things you gotta do, right, to get your, right, your generator fired up. Remember, you might be without power for two or three days. So I got to get this going. One of the best ways to get any generator going is take the air filter off, right? Again, refer to your owner's manual. And Honda even shows this, and most owner's manuals will show you this, that you need to take this off. And then... Pop that little air filter off, and we have a spot right in there that we can spray the gum out in. Spray a liberal amount, make sure it's on. Now again, I'm the other generator, see how you get that going. things we had to do to get this ready to get these generators out to get these generators pulled out of the garage to get the cords get my box of cords get my gas my stable my lanterns right even my little gum out to get these generators going so when I ask you are you ready for a red flag warning to lose power right and you could lose power for quite a long time right in our wind event of 2011 the San Gabriel Valley corridor lost 550,000 homes lost power for five to seven days you got enough gas to last your generator for five days? So when I'd say, hey, are you ready? Let's get ready. All right, so I'm Paul Dutton with Emergency Preparedness Network. Come on back because we're going to show you a lot more because we want to get you and your family ready.